Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video I'll be showing you how to create and use the Ken Burns effect within Divi. Now this is a really cool feature that could make your designs look even cooler. So in this video I'll be showing you step by step how to create this. Let's check it out. In order for us to achieve the Ken Burns effect we are going to need a few things in place. So firstly we're going to need a large image because we're going to use this image on the full width header. We're also going to use some custom CSS which I'll link in the show notes below. Okay so let's get started and let me show you how to do this. So the first thing you want to do is to log into your WordPress dashboard and create a brand new page. So I've created a page called Ken but you can name your page whatever you want. So over here, we need to select a full width section and then we need to add a full width header. Right, so this is where you get to add your title. Next, we need to add the subheading. Right, now our image that we're going to use for this is going to be quite dark. So in order for us to be able to read the text on that image, we need to make sure that the text is set to light and then uh, the orientation center and we need to make sure that it's set to full screen. Okay, so let's scroll down and the next thing we need to add here is the background image. So I'm going to click on upload an image. So now my image is already downloaded onto my computer. So all I have to do is to click upload files, select files, and then just navigate to the folder where we downloaded it. So here, okay, so my first image here is right here at the top. I'm just going to click open. So now that it's in my media library, I'm going to go ahead and click on save as image. So that's the image we're going to use. So as I scroll down over here on the um, background color overlay, we just need to come over here and just lower this down to just to add a bit of transparency. Now, this is very important. We need to make sure that use parallax effect is turned on. And also the method is CSS. Now, if you don't choose CSS, this won't work. Okay, so now that we have all this in place, now it's time to go into the advanced design settings. So in the advanced design settings, we need to make sure that the title color is set to white. So I'm just going to select white and this is going to be bold and all uppercase. And the title font size needs to be set to 80. Now it's time to set up the uh, subheading. So I'm going to come over here and add my hex color. Now I'm just using these colors for now, but you can go ahead and choose colors that work with your brand. So over here on the subhead font, I'm going to make sure that it's bold and all caps too. And then here on the subhead font size, I'm just going to increase that to about say 38. Okay, so that's pretty much all we need to do here in the advanced design settings. Now it's time to go into the custom CSS. So under the custom CSS, you need to add a CSS class. This is what triggers the Ken Burns effect via CSS. I've included four options to choose from, and here's a list of them. So first is the uh, zoom in. So this zooms into the image, then there's a zoom out, and then obviously this one zooms out of the image, and then they zoom in right. So it zooms in and then it, it pans to the right, and then zoom, zoom out, pan to the right. So what I'm going to do is to add a CSS class of zoom out. So once we've done with that, now we can go ahead and click on save and exit. So here we don't need this. So I'm just going to delete that and then I'm going to update this page. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on update. The next step now is to add the CSS that makes the Ken Burns effect work. So I'm going to come over here to Divi theme options. So I'm going to scroll all the way down until we get to custom CSS. So this is the area that we need to add the CSS. So I'm going to paste it here. Now, if you want to go along and follow this, I've linked the link to this article in the show notes below. So that will give you all the code that you need to paste in this area. So I'm going to go ahead now, click on save changes. So now let's take a look at uh, this page and see if that uh, zoom out effect is working. So I'm just going to navigate to the page. So you can see the effect is working and it's slowly zooming out. Pretty cool. In our next example, we're going to add the Ken Burns effect to a full width slider. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is to create a new page. So I'm going to come over here, click on add new, and I'm going to call this page Ken Slider. So I'm going to click on use the div builder. I'm going to click on a full width section. And then here I need to add a full width slider. So I'm going to go ahead and select the full width slider. 
So the first thing we need to do here is to make sure that we hide the controls. Automatic animation, we need to make sure that it's set to on. The automatic animation speed, let's set that to 6000. Okay, and then let's continue scrolling down until we get to use parallax effect. And now this is very important that it's set to yes, and also the method is CSS, just like how we did it before. And then now it's time to add our CSS class. So I'm going to come over here and just paste my class over in here. So in the next stage, we need to add our first slide. So just make sure that the image that you're going to use is about 2,500 pixels by 800 pixels high. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my settings and then I'm going to click on add new slide. Now here you can add a heading like that. Next, we need to upload an image. So as before, I've got my, emo, my image downloaded onto my downloads folder. So I'm just going to click on upload files, select files, and I'm just going to double click on my image. And then I'm going to set it as my background. And then over here on the background image size, we need to make sure that this is set to cover. So it just pretty much covers um, all the, the whole area. And then I'm going to scroll down here and I'm just going to make sure that my background overlay is set to yes. And I'm just going to choose a color. So I'm just going to just drag this so I have some transparency. Okay, so now that we have entered all the information that we need, we can go ahead now and click on save. So because this is a slider, we need to make sure that there's more than one image in there. So what you could do is to save your time, you could actually duplicate this a few times and then go back in and change the image to whatever image it is. Now this saves you time to go through the whole process of entering all this information on each and every slide. Okay, so now that we're happy with that, I'm going to go ahead now and click on save and exit. So again, as before, we don't need this empty section. So I'm just going to delete that and then click publish. So I'm going to go ahead and click on view page and we can see that the slider is working. So in my case, I'm using a large screen so you can see I don't get to see most of my image. But one thing you can do is to actually go into the visual builder and add a bit of padding. So I'm going to come here into the settings and then I'm going to go into my design settings and make sure that I add padding top. So I'm just going to add 300 top and 300 bottom so you can see that slightly better i get to see most of that image but this is something that you could go ahead and tweak and see what works for you so i think i'm going to try 400 and yeah i think that's pretty cool because i get to see most of my image so you can see now i get to see most of my image but as i said it depends with your screen so if you have a smaller screen just do your adjustments accordingly so there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and also do subscribe and follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we produce new videos similar to what you've seen today. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.